doing interviews hello mum so uh, here we are in uh, the middle of London where I've got my studio we are doing some lovely interview questions for drum and bass arena and the first lovely interview question that they asked me was I did an EP uh, on true players and it was an eight track EP, so it was kind of like a mini album, really. But what I felt was that it was a bit one dimensional, you know, like pretty much just dance floor, drum and bass. And so I wanted to do something else what sort of um, gave me an opportunity to just do something different, really. And then um, a DJ called Slimzy, uh, who is on Rinse FM in London, um, started playing it in with this sort of UK garage. And uh, basically it just turned into sort of like a big UK garage thing that was pretty much uh, driven by the pirates and by the sort of kids. So we realised that it was going well and then in, in the end um, I signed it to Azuli who are to do with Black Market Records and they released it as a single. The reaction from the drum and bass scene, I think all of the heads, everybody like the, um, the DJs was all like, yeah, wicked. Go on, mate. Do, you know, like sort of show a bit of versatility. versatility. Um, I think, I remember that uh, Fabio and Groove Rider, they went to Cardiff and uh, this, and you know, Groove Rider sometimes plays house music sets and you know, I, I imagine Fabio does. They're both pretty, they're just music heads, aren't they, them two? And uh, some kid was saying to Groove, ah, oh, fucking, what's Zinc doing? He's a cunt, he's making all this fucking shitty UK garage. And Fabio had to stop Groove Rider from hitting the kid because Groove was like, what, are you going to tell me I can't play house and Zinc can't make breaks, yeah? Like, started freaking out on the kid. And um, you know how Groove does. <laughs> no, exactly subtle. Hello, Groove. You're right, mate. <laughs> music, na music naturally goes. You know, drum and bass follows its own path. And if we said, if we all looked at the the hip hop world and said, right, so Ronnie's going to be Pharrell, and you know, Groove Rider's going to be Funk Flex, and blah blah. You know, like, and we try to emulate what they're doing. I don't think it would work. I think the reason that drum and bass works is because it's just a natural thing and people do what they're feeling. There's, there's certain things that can be learnt from other scenes, definitely. But, I mean, if you're looking at hip-hop, like, so much of it's really sort of commercial. I wouldn't really want drum and bass to go that way, personally. I did used to use more hip-hop vocals, and I do now record more vocals live. And it, that's not, that wasn't like a conscious thing. It was just, it's like, when I started off, my studio was a 200 pound mixer, an Atari, and an Akai S950, and that had 30 seconds of sample time in it, and that was it. I didn't have, I didn't have a mic or a compressor or nothing, or a studio to record in, so it would have been, it was hard to record vocals. When I did that Faster album, I recorded a load of vocals, and uh, I really enjoyed the process of recording vocals. It's quite a, after using like MIDI and doing stuff a certain way for years, um, I've never really recorded it or used any live instruments, so it was interesting to do that. It's sort of harder to tame. Yeah, so so recently, I, you know, I'm interested in doing doing vocal stuff. You know, the stuff with Jenna, stuff with X Man. Um, you know, I did a tune with Slaughter John. I just I think I've, I've enjoyed actually doing creating new stuff rather than using other people's things. I do. I, I like to use samples in the studio, but uh, for vocals, I think I'm starting to get into more into a thing of actually record doing them original. Basically, the story with Jenna is that I kept seeing Jenna yeah, like out and about in clubs, and I'd say to her, like, oh, have you done any new music? You know, like, I was just on her case to get some new, you know, some new vocal stuff, because I love playing tunes with, you know, real vocals in them. And uh, she was like, oh, nah, but I, what, like, what I'd like to do is to sort of do a drum and bass album. And I'd be like, oh, and so I said, oh, wicked, yeah, like, let me know when you start it, and I'll send you some instrumentals and see if you, you know, if I can put anything on your album. So she's like, oh, yeah, cool. Then I see her a couple of months later, and I said, oh, how you doing, Jen? Like, what, what, what's happening? She's like, yeah, oh, yeah, I want to do a drum and bass album. And I was like, right, yeah, well, when you, when you, when you want to do it, let me know, and I'll give you a couple of tunes. So she's like, right, yeah, cool. And I see her a couple of months later, and I'm like, oh, so what's happening, Jen? She's like, yeah, I want to do a drum and bass album. And it's like, right, okay. <laughs> so I was like, look, 
uh, it's it's not it's not that easy a thing to put together and she's busy doing all like hundreds of different things at once you know so i was like i'd love to be involved and and to actually release the album you know i'll do it as best as i can and so um so jenna agreed to it and i had to give her a hypnol first and then i got the contract out and said right just yeah so no she, she agreed to it and um so far, you know, a load of people have done tracks. Um, Artificial Intelligence, um, TC1 of Stress Level, D Bridge, DK, Friction's working on something, uh, Comics, New Tone, Logistics, me, who else is there? Chase and States has done a wicked one. She's going to be doing some um, live dates later in the year. Um, and so far, we've done quite a few where I'll be DJing and she comes and uh, sings. She does. She'll do. She'll do like five tracks live. When I say live, I mean we'll just play an instrumental. She'll sing live. So the vocals are 100% live. The rest is 100% not. And uh, but maybe we're going to change that for the later in the year. We'll see. The thing with the drive-by car tune. I had a day booked in a studio in the West End. Um, there was a few people come down just to do me specials. And uh, I said to X, you know, if you've got like an hour or two free, can you come down there and, and just um, do us a special? And he was like, yeah, of course. He came down there, smacked it, I'd done it. And then so many people was like, when's that tune coming out? And I was like, oh, it's not, it's just a, just a special. But so many, you know, like my agent was saying, I've had four people this week ask me when that tune's, can you just, like I'm your agent, not your fucking PR person. Can you either release it or not? And like fucking, you know, we had all different people asking. So in the end, we was like, all right, we'll put it out. Not in Africa, not in anywhere. You meet such lovely girls as we are. Only in Portugal. He's a Brazilian DJ, and he um, he came from Brazil and DJed in England, drum and bass. And um, yeah, he comes from Sao Paulo. Paulo. And um, Paulo. He's, Paulo. yeah, and his DJ skills are amazing. So everybody in England was like, wow, who's this, who's this guy? Who's this guy? He's come from just another in, country, scratching and... Yeah. and Brazil, he does yeah. it like Brazil playing football, space. you know, football. Lots of, but he plays the, you know, the scratches. Yeah, very, really good. Uh, he is she knows. flowing. And you're yeah, speaking for the, the mix. I asked him to do the, the, the mix, the last, uh, mm -hmm. the, the last mix he did. I asked Martin to do it. And um, he did it and it's wicked and it's just come out. It's very good. Really for you. Thank it's you. Really wicked. I know. I'm very, really? Happy, very happy about it. Yeah. Yes, yes, madam. Who is Mood, the second swing? Oh, Mood to swing. Who are they? Mood to swing are a, a US-based house act. Um, like on bingo, like we put out drum and bass and breaks and house as well. We do all different we stuff. Do, yeah. And, and Mood to swing are a house uh, act. And the first house record that I released on my label was by Me To Swing. I want to have a record label that's unlimited. You know like, because a lot of record labels they, they release only drum and bass or only house or only this or only that but I want to be able to just release music. If I like it, I release it. Here we are, this is what I do, obviously Fridays and Saturdays, you know, I DJ in clubs and that, and then in the evenings I make tunes and that, but during the week, usually, um, I work in this inglorious trainer shop here in, uh, in Brick Lane, we do very small trainers, and uh, also, thanks Able Assistant, you know, also we do very big trainers, glorious Brick Lane, right? Next question. Personally, um, I think that the way, like when I started making tunes, it was not easy to get in the studio and make a tune. And now, all you need is a, is a PC. So, so it's cool that now, 
anybody can make a tune, but the downside with that is that anybody can make a tune. And so, you know, there's a lot of toot. Whereas I used to get, um, you know, 10 demos a week. Now I'll get like 30 or 40, and, and, and it's still only one or two that are good. Um, so I think, you know, a, a downside of, of the way drum and bass has gone is that there's a lot more music around that, that, that maybe shouldn't be released. You know, and some people are like making tunes and if a big label don't pick it up, they're like, right, fuck it, I'll put it out myself. And then they'll sell 500 or 1,000, and it's like, that's kind of watering down things. Yeah, the way the music's gone, I mean, I'm a bit, I don't really like the way that everything is uh, very compressed and maximized, and um, it it seems to be to like a, be a little bit soulless, but then, you know, people like Calibre and D-Bridge are um, the remedy for that. Those two are sort of, for me, the most sort of inspirational producers. I think the music, like drum and bass is always going to follow its own path and that is always going to be right. There isn't, you know, there is no sort of, if I was to stand there and say, oh, I wish it had gone more fucking jazz influenced or I wish it had gone more like this. I don't think that's, I think that it goes the, it goes the way, you know, that, um, that it's just a natural path. One of the beauties of drum and bass is that nearly all of the music that's released in, and available in the shops is on record labels that's owned by us lot who love it. And so it's not some number cruncher going, right, how are we going to make 50 grand? It's someone going, oh, that tune's running. And that's, that's it. Tower to Captain Rocket Ship Star of Polaris. You've been cleared for takeoff. Roger, all set tower. Eight, X7, X6, X5, X4, X3, X2, X1, fire. Yeah, I think when someone like, like uh, you know, we're not, we're not optical, came into the scene, it kicked everybody up the arse because he's a fucking bad boy producer. And then when Pendulum came came along, it kicked everybody up the arse. Again, it's like when Marky came along DJing wise, you know, it, everybody was like, fucking hell. You know, like when I first went to Brazil, this is before Marky had ever played in England, he was DJing before me. And normally when you go to another country, the DJ that's on before you, you know, like a lot of the time they're, re they're really good at mixing or, you know, and they've got, they've got good tunes, but Normally I think at least I've got a few tunes that I'll be able to play that they haven't got or whatever, but I was standing there thinking, fuck, right, fuck, man, you know? And he was killing it. And I mean, if you, I mean, if you want to see something, go to Brazil and watch Marky. You know, like, them people, he's like a football star. You know, like, I've been there and he's been in, a, you know, a few different newspapers on the same day. And it's the same with, with Pendulum. They've come in and they've, and they've, and they've the, uh, production is such good quality a few people you know like I know that I, I've listened to their stuff and thought this is really fucking well produced you know it, it keeps it keeps the uh, the old the old gits on their toes when there's new people coming along um, I think that a lot of people I see you know like I've heard them talking or um, I've seen people comment that the drum and bass scene kind of locks it down and doesn't let, any, let anybody new in but that's that's like the opposite you know like pendulum come along they make wicked tunes they're in they're like voted number one producer or whatever you know like they're in straight away groove rider ain't phoning people up going boy these pendulum boys you know what we've got to look you know like it's it's, it's, it's it, you know it's the opposite it's the opposite everybody's everybody's phoning pendulum going oh we've got any, any beats i can play so i think that if people complain about the scene is hard to get into. It's, it's a natural thing. It's not, um, you know, it's not like pop music where you can be branded as being really cool and you, and you don't have to have any substance. You know, like if you're really good, you know, you you you'll succeed. You know, people probably think what a cunt he is for saying that, but. Cameraman says it's true, so it's bloody true. If you've got a problem with it, you talk to him, not me. It was I'm not it's not it wasn't even my idea, it was his idea. He's holding up. Yeah. It's it's, it's on my auto cue. Alex from Drum and Bass Arena. Have you ever wondered who is Alex Arena? Hear me now. <laughs> it's just so the wrong thing to say, Alex. <laughs> oh well you can tell. Did you think in part, in mm, party party glue blue uh, drum and bass this night? Yeah. It was the best warm up ever. <laughs> 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 really? No, really. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the CD. I hope it. I hope there ain't no clanging. And maybe you can watch the DVD with the sound turned down and the uh, the, the CD turned up. 
the whole thing of this DVD is that if you play the DVD at the same time as the CD, it all syncs up. Uh, but I, I didn't want to say that till the end of the DVD. But yeah, so if you do that, try that now, and then right at the end, see how it, see how it is. And then you see if there's a bit with, uh, you know, if, if X-Man's chatting on a certain thing, you'll see that my mouth is actually talking, and I'll be talking about fucking nonsense, while X-Man's actually chatting about, you know, lyrics and stuff. 